Near my house recently, a large dolphin got stranded in water inches deep about fifty yards from shore. We waded out to it. It was a very big bottle nosed dolphin, ten feet long, about eight hundred pounds, and very stuck. The tide was still dropping. No way could we move it to deeper water. Dolphins breathe air, of course, but we needed to keep its skin wet. We needed bed sheets and buckets. So we were on our cell phones right away calling neighbors and the marine mammal rescue people who could take it for veterinary care and rehab. For more than an hour we poured buckets of water. The dolphin just watched and breathed, opening and shutting its blowhole like a precision valve. I was feeling pretty good about saving it until the dolphin lifted its head and opened its mouth. Its teeth were worn flat to the gums. This was a dolphin decades old. My perspective of him shifted from unlucky victim to successful survivor at the end of a long life. My pity turned to respect. Had it come on purpose to these protected shallows to avoid sharks and things that might attack an animal in distress? Had it come here knowing somehow that it was time to let go? Did it come here to die peacefully? If so, what did it think of all the people and hubbub? Its eyes closed slowly, seeming to declare a need to rest. Was it watching its life splashing before its eyes? It began making barely audible clicking sounds. Who was it addressing, and with what message? The rescuers noticed a little bit of bloody froth at the dolphin's blowhole. I suddenly knew there could be no future for this old mariner. The best thing, I thought, euthanize it, now, without moving it from its resting place. I also knew the rescuers would not do this, not in front of a crowd. We were committed to moving it first to the pickup, then off the flats to shore and into the rescue truck. So now I wondered, whose anguish were we sparing, the dolphins or our own? With great effort we rolled the big animal first one way, then the other to get the stretcher under it. On the count of three we heaved it up, then up again until it was even with the high tailgate. Then, with a lot more effort, we loaded it into the truck. We'd rescued the dolphin. But from what? On the way to the rehabilitation center, the dolphin went into spasms. The rescue people put it down in the truck. It was dead on arrival. We'd acted with compassion in our hearts, but we'd gotten ourselves stranded in the commitment to do good no matter what, and we carried that thought too far. There are worse ways to die than coming to a peaceful sand flat in a quiet bay in springtime and waiting for the tide to drain away. I wish we'd realized that at the start. When my time comes, I hope I remember it.